from plants poisonous to sheep and goats. Poisonous plants become important on the concern that they are causing some economic loss. Uh, this economic loss is coming to the farmers because after ingestion of certain like, um, poisonous plants, maybe accidentally, maybe maliciously, these plants will get debilitated. They will uh, decrease their production. They will be more uh, weakened. So ultimately, the productivity will decrease. And when the productivity decreases, the farmer will be at loss. So our concern is that this, uh, that our sheep and goats should not eat those plants and should be at par in their productivity level. Each year, these plants are adversely affecting nearly 3 to 5% of all the sheep and goats who are grazing in the ranges. So the losses, uh, why come the losses? These losses, they come due to graze uh, grazing in the ranges infested with poisonous plant. Uh, when the ranges are there and the animals are allowed into the ranges and they get the poisonous plant, they, they have the tendency to consume those plants. If this tendency decrease, increases in cases when the animals are stressed. Often the animals are stressed after a drive-in from a long distance and unloaded from the trucks. They might have been tagged. They might have been vaccinated. After that, a stress period is there where in the condition of stress, they are not selective in grazing. So in those cases, if the poisonous plant are present, so they can consume those poisonous plants and may be harmed by those plants. Maybe the animals, if they are not watered regularly, if they are allowed to be hungry for longer periods of time and they are uh, not able to graze on their normal rent or some rays in which the poisonous plants are present, in those cases, the conditions of getting ingesting of this poisonous plant increases. Certainly, poisonous plant, if consumed in lesser amount, they can be digested by our sheep and goats. But this negative effect will come when they will be under hunger, under stress, and they will consume more amount, not able to know how much amount to consume and when to stop. So this more consuming will cause the problem. As we all know, poison, they become poison on the condition when they reach the therapeutic level more than the normal level. Even if we are consuming a normal food, if you consume it more than the normal level, then it becomes poison. Same for the case of these plants only. If you are consuming it at the normal level, then there is no problem. The normal body immunity will allow to overcome it. But when the conditions of hunger and stress come and the animal consumes more than its limit, then the cases of poisoning occurs. Treatment of poisonings. Uh, no particular treatment, but a symptomatic treatment we can do. The, whatever the symptoms are coming, we can do. Like if there is more salivation, we can go for the atropine. If there is convulsion, we can go for the barbiturates. Like this, symptomatic treatments we can do. Moreover, the affected animal, they have to be transformed from the place because the animal has ingested something in the area nearby. So first of all, he has to be moved from the place where the source of poisoning was there. And also the stress of these animals have to be decreased. Because stressed animal, the in, uh, death rate increases. So why is this causing? Why is this death of these animals occurring? This death of these animals occurs because when there are some management errors, managmental errors like to failure to examine a pasture before we are allowing our animals into the field, we should know if there are some toxic plants, if at all there are toxic plants, how many are there? There shouldn't be toxic plants. And the livestock producer, they have to be made aware about the poisonous plants. They should recognize what are the poisonous plants and what can cause the harm to the sheep and goats. Moreover, if the uh, cases of consuming these plants are coming, then we can consult our local veterinarian to get rid of these problems. So many plants are there. Some plants, they are toxic and they have the toxin and they are known to be toxic plants. But some plants, they are not toxic. They are not known to be toxic, but they become toxic when consumed in large amount of number, um, large quantity. So the owner should be aware of both of the type of the plants. They should be aware of toxic plants and they should be aware of non-toxic plants, which can become toxic on consumption in more amount. Proper diagnosis is very much important. Under field conditions, diagnosis becomes very difficult because the plants, uh, when half digested, they are not able to be recognized very properly. So in those cases, we should go for the symptoms. The symptoms should be known, uh, regulated, or uh, monitored very carefully 
so that we can match it with the symptoms of uh, each plant and we can sort out which plants are mane suppose if uh, we are getting some arrhythmia or cardiotoxic thing so we can say it is a cardiotoxic plant else we are getting nervous system the problems uh, like uh, convulsion like staggering so we can go for the plants which are having nervous symptoms like that we can do but all the symptoms uh, it will not be very exaggerated right? it may be sometimes overlap so we should go for a symptomatic treatment and depending on the dose how much amount the animal has taken and how much time after the ingestion has occurred the, um, the prognosis depends also all the individual animal they will uh, respond differently to different poisons so we want to protect our sheep and goats from those plant poisonings it is very important we should understand and identify which are the poisonous plants present in our area in our locality what are the poisonous plants present so we should understand the conditions when these plants can be dangerous under conditions of drought the toxic principle they become more concentrated and when in this condition this wilted or frost plants uh, dry leaves or semi dry leaves are taken by the animal in a very small amount it becomes more poisonous when we are grazing and when we are planning for grazing we should know where we are allowing our animal to graze how much time we are allowing outside or better if we are not allowing our stressed or hungry animal to graze in areas where there might be any poisonous plant moreover there should be adequate water supply for our animals so we should be always careful about the feed uh, status and uh, salt and uh, supplement status we should not put our animals in the area where there is a chances of occurrence of any poisonous plants certainly if our animals get sick after consumption of such plants we should consult our local veterinarian so ensure that there is proper diagnosis and proper treatment if at all the poisonous plant is involved identification of the plant has to be done through a experienced botanist or a poisonous plant expert for corrective actions this the poisonous plant they have economic impact on the farmer direct losses can be there like death aberration and birth defects weight loss lengthened calving interval decreased fertility decreased immune response decreased function by the damage to the nervous system respiratory system digestive system and loss of the breeding stock this will cause direct loss and direct effect on the animal and causing loss to the farmer also there are indirect losses like if the animal if the animal owner or the farmer wants to limit its animal he has to bear the uh, cost factor of the building and maintaining fences so feed requirement uh, it will be increased and he has to regulate the feed requirements medical treatments if at all poisoning occurred it will also cause him losses only and the grazing program he can uh, change and he can go for uh, he can, may not allow the animal to graze and he can give it uh, feed at its place only and decrease forest availability the land value also decrease in this case and the stress management of those animals has to be done regularly so in this case prognosis becomes difficult and it depends on the severity of the poisoning as per the severity the severity of the poisoning it will depend on the quantity of the material taken how much quantity of plant material the animal has taken yet the species of the animal which animal specifically many times we see specific plants are more poisonous for specific species of animals and the level of moisture the uh, leaf or the any plant part how much moisture it is containing it is dry or it is uh, wilted or it is uh, fresh that also depend uh, because it is related to the amount of toxic principle present in those plant part general health status of the animal if the animal is healthy enough then the plants will not cause not much problem if taken in lesser amount but if the animal is already stressed hungry weakened sickened then it will be hampered more age and size of the animal if the animal is a geriatric or if it is a newborn or small animal then it becomes more problematic because we know in those cases the excreting organs like the liver kidney they are in a immature stage so much of the stress will come to the animal sheep and goats generally they eat some poisonous plants and on many conditions there is no injury but at times when they take it more amount so there will be injury and maybe death can occur poisonous plants they are all around us 
so they some are rare poisonous plants some are useful poisonous plants and some are medicinal plants many a times we are getting important medicines from this toxic plants only sometimes they are valued ornamentals like lantana camera which came to india as a weed as a ornamental plant and now it has become a weed so they can be grouped and the part uh, which type of poison it is containing or uh, how the system which which system it is affecting uh that can be divided these are the some pictures we of poisonous plant we will discuss about them so generally the poisoning that can be divided into two parts chronic and acute in chronic cases small amount of toxic portions are being given or being ingested over long period of time in case of acute poisoning large amount the animal has consumed in small amount of time and it immediately becomes life threatening and many cases death can also occur So the root of poisoning is generally the ingestion. Uh, so we should uh, regulate that. The symptoms of plant poisoning it can be mild if the amount is less, and it can be major or moderate, and then severe also. We can see uh, incoordination, convulsions, erratic behaviors, and quick deaths also. Treatment must be rapid. We should remove the animal from the source of poisoning. we should get it treated according to the veterinarian as per its symptomatic treatment and the animal should be given ample uh, good food or the food free from those toxic plants or any toxins and it should be in a very healthy environment as far as prevention is concerned we should always consider that if we are uh, able to regulate the root of poisoning that the ingestion so if we are allowing the animal out and it is going into the open field then only it is able to assess those poisonous plant or rightly or wrongly so we can say that if you prevent the ingestion we can prevent this poisoning in this case we can if you have control on the feed that if the animal uh, is going for zero grazing that it is not allowed to graze it is only allowed to feed in its stall itself by the feed collected by the owner then there will be less or zero chances of contamination through its um, uh, poisonous plants classification of poisonous plants so first of all cyanogenic plants uh, they contain the glucosides or glycosides in our surrounding we can see our acacia tree uh, almonds elderberry or sambucus eucalyptus tree these are con containing cyanide and it cause toxicity plant producing latherism it is due to the lathera species like latherus oradatus latherus lactifolus this causes osteolatherism affecting the bone then later latherus sativus latherus elemon it is neur causing neurolatherism affecting the nervous system then there are plant producing thymine deficiency like bracken fern and hostel then plant causing oxalate poisoning it occurs through spinach almonds beet grains etc plant causing nitrate poisoning like oat oat sorghum corn sudan grass etc plant producing photosensitization a uh, lantana camera buck feet st john's oat then some alkaloid plant poisonings like uh, deadly nets nets or uh, atropa atropa belladonna simpson sweet cardiotoxic plant poisoning due to oleander nerium lentin containing plants like castor bean rosary pea also we can uh, we will discuss about ipomia poisoning gossypol or cotton seed poisoning nox vomica poisoning tannins from oaks and sometimes the poisonous principle is not known like inkberry and pokeweed so first of all we will discuss about cyanogenic plants so under cyanogenic plants many plants come like even our lotus comes under that our acacia leucocephala eucalyptus species sorghum vulgare or jowar sorghum sudanensis and euphorbia species so these plants they contain the prussic acid or hydrocyanic acid it is a very deadly poison it will interfere with the oxygen carrying ability of the blood it is affecting the respiratory system in this case the deaths are rapid with very less exhibition of symptoms in cases when there is wilting of this green leaves caused by the frost storms or cutting this there is changes in this glycosides present in the leaves and there is change to a hydrocyanic acid and sugar due to the presence of sugar this is a sweet and wilted leaves so it becomes more attractive to the animals than the normal foliage the animal once consumed it goes on consuming the pathognomonic sign comes as a, a sudden death after a frost fall or a change in weather this limp and green leaves 
or allowed leaves are most dangerous and they have more concentration of this toxic principle. Quite a few leaves, a handful of leaves can kill a seaporic boat. The cyanogenic plants, it exhibits difficulty in breathing, anxious expression, staggering, and animal becomes a comment. Sometimes the alumen may, may, may die also. The pathognomic sign is the blood is very bright red. This uh, cyanogenic gly glycosides are linamarin in case of linseed meal, durin in sorghum, amadelin in bitter almond. So what happens? This is the presence of uh, some uh, toxins in this uh, plant. When the plant is more consumed, what happens? It goes and attacks your cytochrome oxidase. This cytochrome oxidase, it is being captured by this cyanide. So when cytochrome oxidase is captured by cyanide, it is not able to do its normal work, that is respiration. So respiration is being hampered. So in case of treatment, when we need treatment, so we are giving sodium nitrate followed by sodium thiosulfate. So how it's helping? This sodium nitrate along with hemoglobin, it will form methemoglobin. As a result of which, cytochrome cyanide complex is formed. This cytochrome cyanide complex is formed when the animal was consumed that uh, hyocyanic acid uh, leaves. After that, that uh, cyanide has gone and attacks it is cytochrome oxidase and that complex is being formed. Whatever treatment we gave, there comes the methemoglobin. This methemoglobin attached to this complex and allows the formation of cyanomethemoglobin and releases the cytochrome oxidase for its uh, normal functioning. The cyanomethemoglobin is again treated with sodium thiosulfate, which releases thiocyanate, which is a soluble and uh, non-toxic component, which can be easily excreted. So the cytochrome oxidase is released and it is going to do its normal work properly. In these cases, as there is a respiratory distress, artificial respiration is to be also given. Plants producing latharism. So latharism, it is of two types. Uh, as we have discussed a bit, uh, osteolatharism and neurolatharism. In case of osteolatharism, it is affecting the bone portion. In case of neurolatharism, it is affecting the nervous system. It is uh, restricted to India and Bangladesh. In cases, we are getting irreversible spastic paraparesis. The toxin is uh, beta n oxalo amino l alanine which is an excitatory neurotransmitter agonist. So there is more excitement and the animal su suffers due to this. Plants producing thiamine deficiency. Two plants, Teridium aculinum, Brackenfern, then Equistanum avanesi, Horstel. So these they are giving out thiaminase. Thiaminase, when found in some plants, this thiaminase, it will break down this vitamin B1, which is thiamine. When there is sufficient thiamine, the animal is having its normal process and there is a normal body process is going, normal body metabolism, normal growth is going on. But when the animal ingests thiaminases, this thiaminases will break down the thiamine. As a result of which, the normal energy production is stopped. As a result of which, the general signs of weakness comes up and there is a weight loss, impaired feed intake. And you can see the picture where there is polyencephalia in encephalomalacia in case of sheep. Generally, these ruminants are resistant to thiamine deficiency. But this ingestion of thiaminase will lead to the disease condition like this polyencephalomalacia. Here you can see the disorientation, wandering, blindness, and opisthotonous condition. Anorectic animal and the feed utilization is poor and causing weakness. Plants producing oxalate or oxalate containing vegetables are there. Oxalate containing nuts and seeds are also there. Vegetables like spinach, uh, beet, and uh, nuts like almonds, cashew, peanuts. So how is this oxalate poisoning occurring? Oxalate is an anti-nutrient. When it is being consumed and it goes into the body of the animal, in those cases, it will bind to the dietary calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium are required for the body of the animal. But when it is binding with this calcium and magnesium, it is forming, lowering the serum, magnesium and calcium level. Also, it will precipitate them in the kidney. So, slowly this oxalate diet, it will degrade the bacteria in the rumen and there will be oxalate poisoning. However, if a small amount is taken, it is not problematic due to this oxalate degrading bacteria. But if large amount is taken, this bacteria are not able to overemulate and uh, there is problem or the 
toxicity. Moderate to severe swelling of the lips, tongue, oral cavity that can be seen due to the presence of this oxalate in the gastrointestinal tract. Here you can see the picture of acute oxalate intoxication due to oxalate poisoning of plant. Then plants producing photosensitization, uh, hypericums, ascular clover, lantana camera, acel, and St. John's sort. So these are photodynamic plants. What are photodynamic plants? Photodynamic plants, they contain photodynamic substances in them. So when these photodynamic substances are being ingested by the animal, it goes into the body of the animal, goes into the blood of the animal, and these the photodynamic substances are released. So in order that animal will suffer from photosensitization, there must be some precipitating factors like the animal skin must be unpigmented. It should be lighter in color. And the animal must have taken a sufficient amount of this plant. And the animal must have been exposed to bright sun. So the animal has taken sufficient amount of the plant. The plant is consumed. It has gone into the body of the animal. That is the release of the photodynamic substance. And it comes to the surface area of the body surface. And it, the sunlight is coming. On Upon getting the sunlight, this photodynamic substance, it will change the color of the body of the animal. The whole area of the white skin will raise up, then may slough off. The affected animal may die also. Sometimes the goats also get badly sunburned when they have enough of this poisonous plant uh, intake and they have allowed into a sunny weather. And if there is no access to set, it, it suffers too much. Another two photodynamic plants, Parthenium hysterophorus and Lantana camaria. Parthenium hysterophorus, this plant is a problematic weed and it has got the parthenin. As I was talking of the photodynamic substance, the parthenin is the photodynamic substance in Parthenium hysterophorus and it causes damage to liver and skin. So cutaneous lesions can be seen on the tip and the base of the ear, neck and thorax, knee, hog joints. Edema can be seen around the eyelids and face. In case of lantana camera, same, there is the digestion of the ingestion of this plant. Digestion occurs in the rumen, then absorption of the toxin from the rumen and the small intestine. Then the transportation of the liver to the, the toxin to the liver, which then goes to the portal blood. In the liver, there is metabolism and there is the cholestasis, that is a hindrance of this allowing of the uh, this uh, toxin to go far. So there is retention of this bilirubin due to the cholestasis. And there is also ruminal stacks. So there is retention of the phenothysin, again this photodynamic substance, causing jaundice, photosensitization upon exposure to light, and retention of this toxin in the rumen. The toxic principle in case of lantana camera are lantadens, lantadin A, B, C, and D. Then some alkaloidal plant poisoning. These plants are clotoraria and holotropin species. These are containing these alkaloids. And uh, this uh, Senecio group, they have the retrosan, Jacoba, Jacoba plants, they give the Jacobin, Fluvin, Totoraria, they give the monocratelin, Heliotropium, they give the Heliotrin, Cyanoglossin, Lasiocaprin. So these are the alkaloids that are present in the plant. Upon consumption by the sheep and the goats, they will release these alkaloids into the blood of the animal. And then they will cause the, cause the problem. Many a times these are present as an alkaloid on the cuts of the plants. When in the body of the animal, they can be hepatotoxic, they can be pneumotoxic, nephrotoxic. Due to presence of this metabolite is as the alkaloid. The animal will suffer from reduced heart rate, reduced blood pressure and stomach irritation. Death can occur from severe digestive disturbances. Nervous symptoms like convulsions may also be seen. Nitrate accumulating plant. When we talk about nitrate accumulating plants, uh, this uh, plant, they uh, vary in their ability to accumulate the nitrate. Generally, the soil is having nitrate and that can be accumulated in the plants. But this condition of accumulating nitrate, it becomes more if it is the drought condition or the cloudy weather. Many a times, if there is a nitrate accumulation or the nitrate spraying on the, uh, um, against the weed or as a fertilizer, then also after that, if the animal goes and grazes such plants, this nitrate poisoning can also occur. Here, we are talking of the nitrate accumulating plants, the plants which can accumulate nitrate from the soil itself, like hay, sorghum, corn, sudan grass, 
so after poisoning or after ingestion of such plants or in large amount we can see blue coloration of the membranes which is known as cyanosis shortness of breath staggering gait chocolate brown color of blood and congestion of the rumen and abomasum in case of subacute poisoning we can see watering eyes anthropty appearance reduced milk flow reduced weight gain aversion and infertility another group is selenium accumulating plants selenium accumulating plants are of three types primary selenium accumulator which accumulate selenium uh, as a uh, normal process of their own uh, there are astragalus xylorrhea then secondary accumulators like aster asteriplex then there are passive accumulators like wheat so they will accumulate a bit but primary and secondary ones they will accumulate selenium it's much amount so when there is poisoning we can see abnormal gait unsteady gait petechial hemorrhage endocardia hemorrhage of the lungs enteritis passive liver congestion in case of acute poisoning but in case of chronic poisoning we can see lameness the hoof will overgrown as soon there is a loss of long hairs also the plants which are containing more than 5 ppm of selenium they become potentially toxic when ingested by sheep and goats they can cause toxicity both in acute and chronic process some mechanical injury by plants are also reported some spines and fine hairs can be also present when uh, taken by the animal that can be abrasions they can uh, abrase the whole uh, gastrointestinal tract also some examples are sand blur squirrel tail grass like that then cardiotoxic plant poisoning though these plants contain the toxin which are cardiotoxin they are affecting the heart examples are digitalis purpurea digitalin uh, nerium oleander uh, nerin Uh, conium maculatum conium and thebetia peruvena thebetin so these are some cardiotoxins so uh, these cardiotoxins uh, are able to affect this um, our sodium potassium atp system when it is inhibiting your sodium potassium dependent atp system it will decrease your intracellular calcium and decrease the force of myocardial contraction so the way in which your normal heart of the animal was beating it is needing a contraction force if the intracellular calcium is decreasing the force of contraction with which the heart was contracting it will decrease so there is decrease in myocardial contraction and there is difference in the normal heart process so the symptoms comes as pain arrhythmia also slowing of heart so here we can see the pictures of affected animals after nerium oleander poisoning and here the animals are taking conium maculatum without knowing then some uh, lentin containing plants uh, lentin containing plants abrus precatiaris or uh, this toxic principal is abrin then the ricinus communis or castor uh, this abrus precatiaris is rosary pea and this ricinus communis has ricin abrus precatiaris or rosary pea it has the abrin abrin hematoglutinin so it acts as a proteolytic enzyme it inhibits the protein synthesis acting on ribosome also it causes agglutination of the rbc profuse hemorrhagic diarrhea will be there muscular spasm convulsion death and enlargement of the lymph nodes are known ricinus communis toxic principles are ricin 1 and ricin 2 in both the cases the more amount of toxic principle is present in the seed so the most toxic part is seed in both these plants mechanism action is again inhibiting the protein synthesis symptoms comes as nausea vomiting diarrhea also bloody diarrhea icterus or jaundice signs of abdominal pain hypomia poisoning hypomia carnia hypomia acerifolia so this toxic uh, plant is the leaves toxic principal saponins and uh, they also accumulate some amount of nitrate from the plants from the soil mechanism not clearly known symptoms are anemia erythrocyte or rbc fragility congestion of kidney endothelial hemorrhages in lactating use when they are consuming this hypomia they are causing tremors and ataxia in the lambs gossypal poisoning or cotton seed poisoning cotton flower and cotton so the gossypal is the major toxic ingredient it is found in the pigment glands in the different parts of the cotton plant gossypal it occurs in the seed in more concentrated form in both protein bound and free form 
the signs after gossipal poisoning are cardiac hepatic and renal reproductive uh, systems is also affected and that can be acute heart failure also hypokalemic uh, heart failure can also be seen pulmonary defects labored breathing are also seen stitching poisoning stitchnus nox vomica the toxin uh, lies in seed leaves bark etc the toxin principle uh, varies as per the plant part in seed it is strychnine and colubrin in leaves it is brucine in bark it is mainly brucine the symptoms seen are mainly nervous symptoms nervousness restlessness hyperirritability obstetronous condition it is a typical sea horse posture which is seen the site of action of ricin is rensa cell and it is a competitive antagonist of glycine receptor so it interferes on the glycine mediated post synaptic inhibition so it is interfering with the inhibition or interfering with the depressive state so it will give rise to the uh, excitatory cells and it will lead to those obstetronous condition hyper irritability convulsion like that type of symptoms comes in strychnus nox vomica poisoning so now we will go for specific poisoning which are seen for goats the poisonous plants poisonous for goats so azalea uh, it is a rhododendron uh, its distribution uh, lies from kashmir himachal pradesh north eastern state darjeeling sikkim it contains glycosides and this uh, flower is very white pink or red petal flower it is very attractive but the toxic parts are all the parts uh, but the leaves are more toxic but the symptoms that the animal develop is gastrointestinal symptoms and then the abdominal pain diarrhea it will come generally it comes within the first 5 6 hours also we can see disturbances in the cardiac rate different disturbances in the cardiac rhythm also if the amount of consumption of the plant is more we can see convulsion coma followed by death rubab revatica distribution southwestern himalayan region this is a perennial plant it contains uh, oxalic acid and calcium oxalates we have already discussed how the oxalic acid it is going and binding to the calcium and magnesium and affecting the normal calcium magnesium related body processes also it will cause deposits and affect our kidney the symptoms comes as uh, excessive drooling of saliva gasping and uh, diarrhea loss of appetite some symptoms also come as uh, confusion and convulsion and then suddenly death so it should not be overfed because it is affecting our kidney and that will be coming up with the kidney disturbing kidney destroying compounds like oxalic acid melia adrisa bakayan so it is also found in the western parts telangana kerala so melia toxin a1 a2 a3 are responsible for the toxicity they are found in the fruit bark leaves and flowers also clinical signs uh, related to gastrointestinal disturbances anorexia vomiting constipation the animal may survive uh, for 24 hours and if we pass survive for 24 hours it will survive more long uh, many times when the consumption is a seed or fruit it can be seen in the uh, undigested material it can come through the feces also and from that we can identify or else from the group of animals if some animals are dead but after the post mortem also we can see and see find these seeds and we can confirm that these are the presence of this seed and the poisoning might have been caused through this cornea maculatum water hemlock distribution jammu kashmir uttarakhand uttar pradesh after ingestion this is a purple blot present on the uh, stem we can understand from this that this is cornea maculatum and uh, the seeds get poisoning by uh, taking uh, 100 to 500 g of the green leaves there is nervous trembling stimulation followed by depression salivation lack of incoordination lack of coordination or incoordination dilation of the pupils convulsion coma death bloody feces gastrointestinal irritation are also seen sometimes birth defects are also noticed sumak or ross korea distribution himachal pradesh south assam arunachal pradesh it is having the allergic phenolic compounds like orsinol it is a oleoresin and it is toxin all the parts are toxin here the hair coat of the animals also becomes contaminated with the toxins and the animals are affected by the orsinol acer rubrum or maple leaves found in the jammu kashmir or himachal pradesh or the hilly areas this contain the garlic acid or the tannins which can kill the microbes 
in the present in the rumen of the goats and if the microbes are killed in the rumen of the goats the normal processor will not call not be there the normal process in by which the toxins were being absorbed or been detoxified it will not be there so there will be presence of more and more gallotannins and it will cause red urine jaundice ataxia and sometimes death many a times the dried and wilted leaves will cause hemolytic anemia also prunus dulcis or almond uh, these are the pieces uh, peaches nectarines apricots almonds uh, found many a times but when significant amount is been taken by goats and then it can cause problem also the leaves are having this toxic principle and it can cause problems like diarrhea vomiton paralysis coma and even death atropa belladonna it is a drug also but uh, when taken in more amount the poisoning is very clear as is contain atropin hyoscyamine clozapine it causes the toxicity and we can see the symptoms very clearly as confusion uh, overeating vision issues comes as it affects the eyes and uh, convulsion and paralysis also comes into picture the distribution is the himachal pradesh and the himalayan region jammu kashmir and uttar pradesh also then some plants which are poisonous to sheep aris germanica it is uh, grown as a ornamental plant and generally along the fence lines it is there the sheep can consume those and they will be affected all parts of the plant are poisonous including the roots also there is a burning sensation of the mouth and throat abdominal pain nausea and diarrhea are seen skin contact with the seed and uh, the leaves of the sap it will also cause problems like dermatitis it can also cause digestive upsets when consumed by sheep in larger amount then uh, ilex this is also known as holy berries it contains the alkaloids like theobromine saponin caffeic acid and these when consumed in large amount it will cause problems like uh, diarrhea vomiton and confusions rhum rubarum it is found in himalayas from kashmir and uh, um, most hilly areas the leaves here in contains the anthraquinones dianthrones anthocyanins and such such cases soluble uh, sodium and potassium oxalates are also there lactic acid oxalic acid these are there so when these acids are there they are locking up the calcium and they are causing the nutritional deficiency in turn we get ataxia and nervousness as a early sign in the latter sign we can get constipation and eventually leading to coma and death many a times the extremities become cold also and the cornea can also become opaque cruciferous vegetables throughout india we are getting those plants like broccoli cauliflower cabbage kale and uh, sprouts radishes so a bit amount or small amount can be handled by our sheep but if the excess is been taken then it can lead to photosensitization head shaking goiter vomiton etc dudhiya grass or erysipelas area it is found in bihar maharashtra uttar pradesh it contains the cardiac glycosides and it affects the heart it also causes nausea diarrhea weakness and confusion in small amounts seizures and uh, difficulty in walking convulsion or death are also seen so small amount if taken it's okay but if certainly about a more or 30 to 100 grams of green leaves are taken then it can lead to non suppurative myocarditis hypericum perforatum it is distributed throughout india the toxic principle is hypericin it is causing causing photosensitization skin irritation like blisters lesions peeling off slopping of the skin can be seen inflammation also seen and areas of skin and ears it will eventually dry up and become swab certain cases hyperthermia is also seen chenopodium albium album uh it is known as bathua grass and in the northern areas it is seen in the northern part of india toxic principle oxalic acid sodium and potassium oxalates it is dangerous for, for pregnant use and it can lead to abortions normal symptoms are after this congestion drowsiness weakness muscular tremors increased heart and respiratory rates staggering gait and recumbency atropa belladonna we have already discussed it is found all over india and it is also toxic to sheep taxus batata himalayan yew or talis patra found in himalayas and parts of southeast asia 
the seeds are uh, poisoned and in case they are poisoned they rarely recover sudden deaths are more seen and the um, signs if any at all there are dizziness mydriasis nausea pain vomiting tachycardia and convulsion oak it is found in hilly states of india uh, it is uh, known as querous rubber the toxic principle is pyrogallal gallotannin and uh, by microbial hydrolysis in the rumen it binds and precipitates swelling gastric hepatic and renal dysfunction as a result of which we can get anorexia depression weight loss sternal edema dehydration ruminal stasis tenesmus there is a pathognomic sign that is a smell of ammonia on the breath and there is a nasal discharge polydipsia hematuria ictus or jaundice and constipation in oak poisoning pteridium maculinum bracken fern talcocide is a potent poisonous compound and it initially damages the bone marrow also it is carcinogenic in the long run symptoms in sip is fever listlessness and mucus discharge also it uh, leads to bright blindness bracken staggers and angiotic hematuria due to presence of its toxic principle Alpomia purpurea distribution tropic lands of India. Alkaloids like somosin uh, are seen in seed poisoning is due to presence of or consumption of these hallucinogenic seeds. Symptoms: inappetence, depression, weakness of the hind limbs, dyspnea, staggering, pallor of the visible mucous membranes. English ivy or Hydra helix distribution is colder part of the India. and the toxic principle is alpha hydrin it is also a saponin symptoms excessive thirst diarrhea rapid breathing severe poisoning can cause or lead to coma which can lead to death prunus abium or jungle cherry or wild cherry distribution is karnataka western ghats it is a very common cause of sip poisoning because sips are exposed um, to these leaves and uh, this uh, leaves are falling into the pasture this have cyanide so it goes for cyanogenic plant uh, and it affects the respiratory system and there may be convulsion staggering and there will be coma and death so all these plants and the symptoms we have discussed if you are noticing some or uh, many of these symptoms or we are able to know the animal has gone out and it has consumed the poisonous plant and the symptoms are uh, coinciding with the symptoms as we have discussed then we should contact a veterinarian nearby and we can consult them if you are at all seeing the lack of appetite after a grazing from the tree pasture and uh, it is uh, keeping itself uh, isolated and it is being shown as a confused state breathing difficulty bloating convulsions and excessive amount of water intake apathy or fatigue vomiting or diarrhea is seen whenever we are seeing the animals after in such symptoms we should say that uh, we should not think that all the affected animal they will die because it depends on the treatment it depends on the severity what amount of uh, the poisonous plant the animal has taken and what amount it can ingest or it can uh, metabolize by itself by its own body body immunity body metabolism if it has taken a larger amount and the time passed after the ingestion of such plant it also matters and the many factors are needed for its proper diagnosis as a first aid we should prevent further ingestion of this plant and we should provide its supportive care so veterinarian attention is a must and if the ingestion is recent and the clinical signs are present we should consult a veterinarian if you are going for uh, safety concern so we should see if we are making the animals stall fed that any part of any poisonous plant is not present in our stall fed so as we always know prevention is better than cure so we should not allow our animal to graze that goes to the concept of zero grazing we should not uh, allow them to graze we should uh, keep the feed bring the feed to them and we should be concerned that it is not containing any amount of toxin let it be plant or any other toxin and we should not make the animals hungry also we should be keeping those animal fed all the time 
so it should not be kept hungry it should not be stressed and allowed into a pasture it should have an adequate amount of uh, water intake and it we should keep our animals away from the poisonous plant so precautions we should always take and uh, we should uh, preactive uh, that in the area we are having those plants uh, the areas are not uh, getting planted with any poisonous plant which are poisonous to the sheep and goats um uh, getting rid of the potential uh, plant toxin will make the animal safe only we can adopt this zero grazing process also where the control goes into the hand of the owner the animal owner will only regulate what amount of plant which amount of feed the animal is consuming our sheep and goats they are uh, tough creatures they are uh, versatile creatures but we should stick what amount they are taking of fish thing if at all they are taking any by accidentally anything they have taken we there should be dietary exploitation and we should not allow any poison thing to come into their feed and we should stick to the hay and grains and stick to zero grazing and stall feeding